easier because I have the machine to do this. No, 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 no. Four stage of competence. What? Four stage of enlightenment. Um. Stick, stick to the easy one. This is better, straightforward. So first, we talk about uh, Buddha as um, when he was enlightened and before he was enlightened. There are many people who came across him and helped him, right? He came from a very extreme, not extreme, as in he tried every method for the first six or twelve years, I forgot. And he started as, you know, a prince and went and lived his house at the age of, young age of 19. Understand that it's, he needs to come back as a fully enlightened person to help them. Not just like this. There's no way he can help any of them from the trouble of death, illness, uh, and the trouble of heart as well. Like this, you know. They need to go out. You need to go out and seek the way to find it. So he went and he started learning from two of the teachers. As we can show last week, he has achieved top two. Top top two, I think. Top two of the um, roof of the six rims. Basically, he reached the highest one can get without getting out of six rims. In the six rims, he reached the top two by practicing from two teachers uh, in a span of around six years, I think. So the point is he has the ability, talent, and tenacity to get there and he already has done that and his teacher was so impressed he's one of them willing to give up half of his students uh, influence to him so that, that he can teach half of the students he has and the other one willing to uh, give up entirety of his um, teaching seat to him and remember they have a lot of students under their most prestige it's like you know Einstein in our sense, in a scientific way, scientific community. Einstein or uh, someone like, you know, someone genius. Um, so he does not accept any of this invite because it does not solve any problem, um, does not solve the problem of getting out of six rooms. That is, means he still have to pass away when time comes, even that time is very long in astronomical ways, it's astronomical numbers. He has to pass away either way, and uh, he still has to stuck with samsara. The other one is, um, but we must not overlook the importance of having ability to achieve the joy of meditation. In a sense, chan yue, uh, we sing about chan yue in sang gong and all that, right? So, what is the joy of meditation? It's 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 something important. Before you attain full enlightenment, you need this to help you to overcome the... Um, it just makes you very at ease. Why they can sit such a long time? Because they're enjoying. People see like, oh, you don't eat anything, you don't talk anything, now you must be in pain. But no, it's actually a joyous uh, thing to do. They don't use their energy wondering. Their mind is focused. And in a, such a deep level, they're enjoying it. So it's such a wondrous level. However, one do not get stuck in it. If you get stuck, it's very unfortunate. Uh, that means they get stuck in that level and they are not out of six rooms. So Buddha has the ability not to get stuck and he move on to start practicing the extreme asceticism, as in he do not eat for months, years, I think, uh, cut down his food intake. And... In this journey, many people helping him as well, right? And uh, he started with, there's a, one of the Buddha story, I think, in a movie format. Keanu Reeves or something, acting as that. Uh, you know, there's a snake protecting him from shelter. Uh, uh, that's, I'm not surprised if there is actually snake doing that. I'm not, I do not doubt it at all because he's, um, we call it his charisma in a modern way, but he's, he has this, you know, affinity to all sentient beings that make them drop their guards when they see them. So they don't feel threatened, angry. They just feel at peace. This is Buddha, right? This is the characteristic of Buddha. No harm. So the, the five precepts, if you hold your five precepts to the top level, this is Buddha. 
that's Buddha. So it's something simple like five precepts. If you do it to the top level, you have this effect to on people. You don't need to have intention on that. It just happened. Back to the point, he went on and someone saw him, you know, almost fell down to the ground. That's one version of the event. He so hungry and fell down. And this um, man who happened to cross by the rivers, uh, no, cross by the um, forest and saw this you know, noble man, this noble looking man, although he's very skinny and fell down, he offered some food and he took the food, realized now I can focus better. Why am I torturing myself? It's too much. It's unnecessary. It's too extreme. And then he keep meditating and someone else kept walk by and singing, you know, the lute. Like, and then they talk, pondering about if the lute is too loose, you can't make music. If the lute is too tight, it will snap. Just nice. That's why it's beautiful, the music. And he just got inspired by this, you know. So he just move on and continue his practice with food. He don't take this kind of extreme method anymore. Middle path is born in this way. And then he move on with his practice. And one day, um, and then as he recovers, there is this lady with uh, Sujana. Yeah, it's a very young woman named Sujana. And she has delicious rice porridge cooked up ready for this um him uh, this uh the buddha the the prince data and he gave it offered it to him and and the um this version of the event says that the um sujata says that i have you know before passed by and taught you a tree in a sense he, she taught buddha is a tree god back then and in the village they believe if you have any wishes ask the tree god and they will grant you the the wishes and she maybe pray for pregnancy for for her husband so they conceive she already conceived and she has good news so she's repaying Huan Yuan. she's repaying the kindness and so she offered the delicious best quality rice polish to the buddha and the buddha has accepted it and recover even better and then he woke up he stand up and walk towards different path you know, towards the both Gaya area where he will attain enlightenment. Found a good place, sit down. When he was about to sit down, there is another man passed by carrying uh, loads of um, what's it called? Tweaks. Uh, Not like straws yes straws it's carrying straws uh, bale, two bale of straws on at his back behind his back and so he saw this um you know complexion of buddha such you know noble such um he was drawn in it's like okay, his charisma and then he just prepare offered make up a straw man on the spot so that the buddha can sit on the straw man comfortably that's the version of the event i'm reading on that's very interesting and he sat on the straw mat and before he do that and say until my legs dry up my blood dry up i will not leave this seat even my blood and leg is dry up until i achieved this solution this enlightenment so his resolution is um he's very resolute he's very firm in his determination to get there and he did that he made it and the rest of the event has been mentioned in the past um, talk uh, we already talked about. So now our focus should be on after he gained enlightenment, right? He, there is two merchants pass by offering their wares, their best stuff to him, to Buddha, fruits and stuff like that. And these two merchants, because they saw someone such a, after enlightenment, he, he exudes that sort of confidence and that, 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 aura of joy he's, he's looking very happy and joyous it's like you found it at last and eureka moment you know and he, he reached that stage of happiness that you know everyone get affected infected by this in a good way you you're infected by the happiness so he went and offered to this this two merchant went and offered to this uh, to the buddha and they become the first lay disciples 
before the five bhikshu, there's already two lay disciples of the Buddha. So then he moved to the forest of Mergadava, M-R-G-A-D-A-V-A, Lu Ye Yuan, in a Chinese translation of the word. And this means the place maybe have a lot of deer, deer park in a sense. Um, and he went there to, you know, start teaching the Dharma. He first thinking, there's so many people in this world with such muddy mind. How do I help them? And there are some people who are actually very clear. Their passion is very little. That means they do not have too much stuff clouding their mind. They are not subject to too many temptations. They are easily, they're almost there. Like I say, everyone of here, right, the student, especially top student, they have deep foundations, moral foundations, cultivate meditative foundations, you know, then other kind of foundations. They have strong potential. They just need help from someone like Buddha to get the last bit over. Right? He had, they, they all have that found deep foundation already. They are very good in their own community. They are top in their own community before they met Buddha. And how it works is when the student went in to join the Buddha, they themselves were teacher before of many students that follow him. Of course, they all follow this student into the Sangha. And this is how it works. Right? It's like a connection thing. Everyone knows, oh, this is my teacher who is so reverent and so respected. Now he willingly learn from the Buddha. That means this Buddha must be very power, very good, very skilled in his teaching. And they all follow suit. This is how we get 2,500 students. Chang Sui Zhong, as in 2,500 constant student that follows him all the time. The rest is one day, two day like us, retreat three days, seven days. Not 100%. But it's always good. So back to the point. He went there and met five big su. And these five big su, right, the story of them is quite famous. I mean, they were used to follow Buddha when he's at the stage of experimenting extreme asceticism. They saw like, okay, this is the guy who really, really, really determined to get enlightenment. We should follow him. And these five person before they become Shramana, which is monk, um, monk in this terms does not mean Buddhist monk because there's no Buddhism back then yet. Uh, there was Mang as in, in the Hindu, in the Indian sense, as in people who seek the path, whatever the path that is, cultivators. And they follow him and become a monk and sit next to him and practice extreme asceticism of no eating. Uh, before that, they were palace guards. Right? They were actually maybe from palace of Shaimuni Buddha, uh, Prince Siddhartha back then. They follow him to here. And they, they drop their equipment, sell it off and become a monk. So they walk away when they saw Buddha suddenly change their mind. From what they see, he has betrayed them in a way, betrayed the path. Because you start to eat, indulge. For them, what they indulge, maybe eating two pieces of almond is an indulgence. It's a matter of perspective, right? They, they see you don't eat anything, now you start to eat porridge, rice porridge, food once per day and now you betray the path so we shall not follow you anymore let's go guys five of them just walk away went to this place called Lu Ye Yuan Gadava so now Buddha has finished his enlightenment his pursuit he already found it he already attained it his job is to teach now he wants to see someone who can accept it and he went past and say, hey, there you go. There's five people that follows me before. He walk in. At first, in, from distance, the five people were like, La, let's, not, let's not pay any attention to these people, this guy. This guy has betrayed the path. He has not. He has um, went back to the hedonistic lifestyle. For them, hedonistic means eating a lot of right, uh, food, eating food. So for them, they were like, nah, I don't want to follow. I don't want, let's not pay any attention to him. Let's not give him mats to sit on. Let's not give him water. Let's not offer any bowls of food. I mean, arms or offer any water. And then he walked in. As he get closer, everyone get drawn in like a magnet to magnets. 
and they were like, oh my God, he looks so different. It was not the same person they saw before. And literally, his complexion, his in the way of his gesture, his radiance, his, his aura is different. It's just someone is very happy. It's just like when you see someone really, really happy and they have a glow, you, can, you just feel the vibes in a sense. So they feel it. They un, can't help themselves. They kneel down, they give him the net, they let him sit, and offer him water. So he start to give the talk and say, dear, I mean, oh, big sus or something like that. Uh, he said that you're not. Um, I have finally found the path of enlightenment. And I'm here to share with you guys. They all will express a bit of doubt. It's like, have I ever claimed that I have found the enlightenment when I was with you back then? When I was practicing ascetism, ex uh, when I'm practicing uh, fasting, extreme fasting. None of them replied, but they were like, yeah, you didn't say anything about I have found the enlightenment path. I have found a, a journey. So they, they, they were like, very surprised uh, they would accepted it so now you say you have and you do look like you do you found something amazing I want to hear it so when he started the Four Noble Truth which we mentioned last time right Four Noble Truth you know uh, suffering samsara suffering uh, the cause of suffering what accumulates the suffering right first is suffering itself cool and then second is the accumulation of the suffering and then the third one is the elimination of suffering. The fourth is the path towards nirvana, the path after elimination, path leading towards the end of the suffering. So uh, he mentioned that first time, immediately Kao Din Ya, in Chinese it's called Chao Chen Ru, K-A-U-N-D-I-N-Y-A, Kao Din Ya, Big Su Kao Din Ya, immediately got it. And he start to pay take refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha become his official students so he is the first monk in our uh, era in our Buddhist era in this Buddha Shaimuni Buddha era uh, and the first Dharma that he gave the one we just talked about for Noble Truth and stuff is called Dharma Chakra pa Pravatana Sutra so just for the record you know this is a reading and Zhuan Fa Lun Jing is called in 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 a translating it into uh, easier I mean English Chinese is say Zhuan Fa Lun Jing English means spinning Dharma wheel the sutra of spinning the Dharma wheel basically he started talking about the path towards enlightenment after that Buddha has lived with them five of them they all took turn two three th in groups of two groups of three. They have to eat, right? So three of them went out arms. Buddha teach the other two. And then when it's time for Buddha, he himself also lead by example. He don't just sit there and say, get food for me. He walk out as well, let the other big Su, maybe Kao Din Ya, who already gained a light uh, term, understand the path. Or first, he's the first guy who, who gained enlightenment uh, in the way of Arahant, which I will explain later. He teaches, maybe. And then he, the Buddha just went out and ask for alms they all take turns eventually five of them got it he repeat a few times he just repeat a few times same thing a few times different perspective maybe they have answers they will repeat it and they got it and all of them not just got it as in oh I understand what you're talking about yeah cool no he sees what he sees because they all practice they understand concepts they actually practice meditation as Buddha has instructed, instructed, they just go in. They're already practicing before. They just don't know what they're looking for. They just do it. But this time they already tell you, this is how you do it. You know, meditative, count your breath and stuff. Those are techniques. And then they understand conceptually and spiritually, uh, conceptually they need to, you know, let go of all these attachments, which I have taught in very extensive way back in um, uh, Sunday so now we talk about the four stages of enlightenment in the early Buddhism the, the one that Buddha first introduced this four stages of enlightenment after I you know process it a little bit like right now 
it actually is a way to tell us how you cultivate, basically. Those stage of enlightenment is not like it's giving you a certificate. Buddha's like, hey, you're a Sodapana. Hey, now you, you are Sakadam Gamin. Now you're Anagami. Hey, now you're Arahan. Congratulations. Shake your hand. Take a photo. It's not like that. That's too formalized. Buddha don't do that. So let me tell you the four stages. First one is Sodapana, Shutohuan. And the second one is Sakadagamin, Sutohan. The third one is Anagami, Anahan. The last one is Arahant, Arohan. So you can see Chinese literally translate without, um, they literally translate word for word. So first one is stream enter. Remember, to be a qualified Buddhist student, you need to be Sotapana. That is the, that is the hard requirement. Right? In the absence of something, something like Amitabha chanting, you need to at least gain Sotapana to, to be safe from three lower realms. As we mentioned, the concept of six realms, Buddhist cosmology. The six realms, right, for us humans, we are in the middle. And then we have, and the many cultures, all right, right, we put ourselves in the middle, Midheim, and then Vanhelm, and then Helheim, stuff like that in the Nordic. I play too much God of War, sorry guys. Um, point is, we're always in the middle. So same goes for Buddhist cosmology. We are human, we have animal realm lower than us, we have hungry ghosts, and then we have hell realm. The lower it gets, the harder the life is, the more pain, suffering it is. That's always because of karma, which is what we talk about in Tai Shan Ga Pian, in Tai uh, Treatise on Response and Retribution. Now the point right now is, Sotapana do not immune to the lower tree, not because of anything, but because of their ability to let go of the cost that effecting into these three lower realms. What is three lower realms? Greed, hatred, ignorance, right? Tan Chen Si. Three lower realms manifest into, if you concentrate enough, strengthen it, it becomes three lower realms. It becomes three thoughts, unwholesome thoughts, three poisons, we call it Santu, three poisons, three afflictions, in Buddhist term, make it very clear, it manifests into three lower realms. Animal is commonly championed as, not champion, <laughs> commonly representing ignorance. You're ignorant of things, hence they become full, more, more, how to say, less receptive of things in terms of, they are smart animals, but they become animal instead of human, unable to speak properly, unable to articulate. Maybe they can talk among their own kind, but they're always subject to human activities in a way. It's because they have some sort of ignorance in them that caused them to do that. A mixture of others, well, if you go into nuances, they are always a mixture of hatred. If hatred is very strong, it becomes snake. This is a very common thing. They call it vipers, you know, spitting poisons. Why do we describe them as that? Because they have strong hatred. At, other than the vanilla base, which is the ignorance, and then they have hatred. Or if ignorance in the deeper sense, it becomes pig. That way. So it, it, there's many degree of things, just like am, all kinds of human in the world. There are all kinds of animals. They are very smart, wise animal. Not wise, I don't know why, I can't understand them. But they are very smart, receptive animal. But they still become uh, animal. Because some of them have committed lust. Which is greed. You know, lust over human. They become a dog. Uh, lust, I mean, as it, when they're human, they lust. You know, unfettered sexual misconduct. Uh, they become dogs. They become birds. In Yu Xing Hanzhong. Right. They can be very smart, but they still not able to control themselves. So, so those those are, how to say, those are the state of our mind and how it affects the external world around us. And then we have the hungry ghost, which is commonly attributed to the cause, the effect is the effect of greed, right? Unable to let go of your house. Now it becomes a ghost that roam the house. You know, we get hogwarts. It's very fun. But there are also other many accounts of ghosts haunting. 
because they can't leave their house. Why? Someone's stopping them, no one's stopping them. They're attached to it. All right? Some attach their husband and wife to their spouses. Some is becoming a ghost. Some become, you know, there's a lot of story in Buddhism like, hey, there's a monk, you know, who's accepting offering from a lady who husband just passed away. And the monk was like, stop slapping your face. Uh, I mean, stop slapping your, uh, slapping the, the animal. The mosquito, or um, stop slapping the bugs on your face. That was your husband. It was like what? <laughs> because they're attaching to her so much. Some of them is reborn as the animal, like bugs, insects of the book, because they love the book so much. So they literally born in the in, born to the book. Maybe they they the, the larvae or something. Let's not go too much in that. The point is attachments. This is animal realm, but also we can describe a hungry ghost as well. But hungry ghosts in the traditional sense is they literally cannot eat. They are, they are, they are really, the throat will burn, burst into fire every time they contact in food. And, and that's mostly because of the deeper level of karma they have done. Some of them are normal, like ghosts, like us, but in the ghost realm, it's different. So let's not go too far on that one. Well, my point is the attachment. There's something unresolved that caused them to stuck like, like that. For us, same thing. We're still human, as in we're not fully enlightened. We are not. Uh, we still have problems. You know, we have sickness, subject to illness, to death, to all these conditions because we have not resolved it in the past, causing us to stuck like this. So back to the four paths, right? The four stages of enlightenment. Basically, if you want to gain enlightenment, the very first step, right, is Sotapanna. Sotapanna, to attain Sotapanna, one must let go, truly free, like as in the concept does not appear, exist at all. Free from the belief that there is an unchanging self or soul in the five impermanent skandhas. Basically, a driver recognizing that he is not his car. You don't have to stuck with this car. It makes sense, right? It sounds ridiculous when you see that. This is exactly what Buddha is looking at us. Their perspective. When they look at us, it's like a person driving the car. Even the car is already broken down, rusty. They're still hugging the wheels, hugging the light bulbs, hugging every part of the car, unable to part with it. However, as the law of nature dictates, things will deteriorate over time and that car no longer can function. They have no choice but to leave. So that observation is what Buddha observed or people who enlightened observing us who are stuck in this. And we can observe ourselves and other people too. So this attachment to this so-called soul, so let's use science way to break up what is souls, right? It's like what, what we break up the molecular world, right? Uh, atoms and ion, I mean, protons, neutrons, stuff like that. Those are particles. They are considered as material. They form material. So first one, physics. Physical form. Your body, the, this world, Milky Way, blah, blah, blah. But in a more inter, uh, intimate way of saying it, it's your own body your face, your eyeball. So I mentioned that in Sunday, when you lose your sight, does it really mean that you cannot see anymore? Or because the parts that you rely on no longer functions, like light bulb. But you still can see mentally, isn't it? The mental image. It's just the eyes that connects to the brain no longer functions. However, doesn't mean that you cannot see at all. Or it's because you get stuck in that at that very and at this current life, this period of time, you stuck in this faculty that if you want to see, you're gonna rely on your eyeball. It's like what? Of course we need eyeballs to see. Do we have to? Right? Why like this is very meta, meta meta stuff, but um, what we're trying to say is 
to, to understand this, right, we also need to understand that five skandhas, first one is physics, physical, imagine body and everything. And second one is uh, thought, so, uh, so, 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 feeling, can so, uh, everything you feel, you know, cold, hot, uh, mentally, maybe happy, sad, stuff like that. Um, xiang, thought, you know, thinking this, thinking that. So this is like, you know, ideas, theories, uh, this and that, you know. And then, xing, which is the, um, uh, why not just use technology? There you go. Form, sensation, perception, mental formation, consciousness. Oh Lord, don't need to translate so hard. Okay. Uh, yep. Form, matter, physics, the realm of physics. Sensation, psychology, you know, mental. Uh, perception, which is, you know, you perceive you label your emotions, right? You like, you don't like. You 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 identify this person as this feature, this f figures, and and then you remember what this person did, and then blah blah blah. And then the fourth one is mental formations, seeing, constructing activities, karmic activities, volition, all types of mental imprint, mental imprints, and condition triggering by an object, any processes. So perception is just simply what is this? Green, black, white, black, uh, white, brown, uh, up, down, left, right, uh, you know, human, man, woman, uh, trees. And then mental formation is adding a layer of, you know, uh, I like this, I don't like this. So this, it, it links everything together. You know, it, by itself, it's just like that, but it changes everything together. Um, in our sense, wandering thoughts. Why do we wandering thoughts? It starts from sleep, food. I eat a lot of food, I go to sleep, and then it becomes endless chain of thoughts that wanders everywhere, unconcentrated. And if this thing keeps running, when you sleep, you're shutting, shutting down the obvious side. The subconscious is still working. It's still giving in terms of dream. Sometimes you don't have dreams because it's not strong enough. Sometimes it's strong enough. Those activities do not stop. Even your body dies. It keeps going. That's how your six realms is formed. The last one is consciousness. And this is what this is what I say. Um, consciousness is awareness of an object and discrimination of its component aspects. In Mahayana source, the base that supports all experience. So this is what I'm trying to say is I always come from Mahayana perspective, right? The eight perception, the eight consciousness. Ba shi. Ba shi wu si yi xing suo. So, in uh, Chinese Buddhism, right, when we imported the um, tradition of Mahayana, we have developed so well on the, um, well, they developed very well in India and we inherited them. Uh, the idea of eight, uh, the, the conscious only school. And championed by Maitreya, Maitreya Buddha, Maitreya Bodhisattva Maitreya. Uh, this um, school talks about very, in a way, very close to science. Like it's something very familiar with when you study science. You break down the sense of sight, you know, uh, stimuli and then the ability to see and the stimuli that makes you see. Blah blah blah. My point is, we all have eight conscious, all right. And when we talk about Buddha nature, the relationship between Buddha nature and this consciousness, you know, a, a accumulation of mental activities, is like a moon and the reflection of the moon. Sui Zhong Yue. Moon represents our true nature. Reflection of the moon represents the consciousness. So whatever consciousness is a projection of the true nature, or rather a perversion of the true nature. Right? The the, the origin of you, essence of essence of being, of unbeing, unbeing, the un, the concept of being unbeing already defeat the purpose of the true nature. I'm going like really fix over there. This is part of the Buddhism as well. See I, it can be very deep. But the point right now in practical sense is all this consciousness that we talk about, the eight consciousness, right? 
if we break it down, the first five is common. It's already coincides. Six is as well, psychology. First fifth, the first five, sight, right? Smell, touch, taste. Uh, what else? Sight, touch, hearing. Yeah, hear. So the five senses. The five senses is the first five, right? It's 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 an extension of the consciousness, and then we go to number six, thought, our mental activity. But number six is only like here we saw percepts. They, they only give, you know, classifications, you know, execute, uh, different, differentiate things, you know, group it into box categories. And those are well comfortable in the comfortable realm of modern science. They talk about all these neural activities, you know, the pulses and all that. But our concentration is the last two. The eight consciousness and the seven consciousness. Those things were not well known by science yet. They were not advanced enough. But Buddha already mentioned it. The eighth consciousness is the storehouse consciousness, where it stores everything you have done in in the storehouse. It's not physical, of course. There's no how many data you know, you deal with computer gigabytes. No, it's not. There's no limit to this. Endless, boundless. Because in true nature is endless, boundless. It's just perverted into this. So now we have eight consciousness as a storage, a warehouse. Seven consciousness is the one that I like, I hate. All right, I, 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 um, I want, uh, I crave. So he received the information from the. Um, let me see, Mayana. They receive information from the, yeah. From whatever they they see, uh, yoga chara. Yeah, babe. Yeah. For my favorite part. No, not this one. Let's not go too far on this. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Deluded awareness. Hey, there's. It's applying lens, colored lens to what they observe. First five is just a job. All you do is just collect the information, right? It's not your tongue that craves the food. Don't say that, it's unfair to the tongue. Tongue's job is just to identify sweet, sour or not. It's not his fault, in a sense. The fault lies on the seven consciousness. I like sweet, I hate bitter. And that's why when you look at, understand this level, go back to Buddha's precept, you will respect Buddha even more. He do not say nonsense. He do not set on stupid rules. He do that out of necessity because you want to get enlightenment. This is how it works. If you don't have the prior knowledge, it's fine. He already know. Trust him. Right? His credential is solid. So what, basically what we're talking about is manas, mona, mana, mona, alaya, alaya, alaya consciousness, alaya vijana, alaya consciousness. Storehouse, repositories. So number seven is a problem here. Number seven is the guy that that always say, I don't like this, I like this. All my emotion in the very early stuff is the number seven. Alright? Now I can be clear about that. But you when you caught up into it, you get caught up into it. Uh number six is just thoughts, you know, like, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Like I'm thinking right now, like I'm linking things into Coherent sentences, that's thoughts. I'm linking five senses information into a coherent stuff and then up to my seven to interpret. So understanding the five skandhas is understanding this one, the eight, eight consciousness. And understand this eight consciousness, we understand that all these things are aggregations, clinging. They're all clinging. And they are not... Um, to be taken as ourself. We call ourself, say, obviously no one identify I my tongue, I my eye, those things gone. I my body, your hands gone, is your hands still yours? Right? It's just a lump of materials. Of course it will be painful and all that. But it's easier to understand that body is not you. But what about the thoughts? 
you're not your thoughts as well. There are Descartes' way of saying, I think therefore I am, is advanced than, it's more advanced than, say, I stuck to my body as existent. But it's not permanent. It's, it's not you as well. Because if it's you, it shouldn't change. It should follow your, follow your direction. But your thoughts, sometimes you can't control it. Uncontrolled emotions, uncontrolled outbursts, uncontrolled actions, right? Uncontrolled speech, sometimes, you know. Or if you're very well controlled at the end of your life, you can't control it anymore. That's not you. Um, so here, to enter Sotapanna, you need to be able to overcome all these five skandhas, right? Not in depth, but at least you do not allow it to link to you. So you're already no longer attached to it. And then rites and rituals, it means that stucking in a way of doing things. You know, it has to be A, it has to be B. Everything else must be wrong. Um, doubt about the teachings. There's no one doubt about Buddha's Dhamma. So he had full gained confidence in the Dhamma, Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Those are qualifications of a Sotapanna. And one who achieved that will not know that. They will only people who higher than him or same level as him would recognize it. It's basically like you you there, the Buddha will say, hey man, you were there. And then you were like, oh, I'm there. I'm here. You don't know because you keep, you're already being in this state. You don't think about, oh, Sotapanna. Uh, you're just concentrating. So same goes for the rest. You can see that this is like letting go the sensual desire and ill will, uh, the negative thoughts. Uh, the um, greed, hatred, ignorance, things. These are gradual process. Lighten up, lighten up the load. Let the effect of anger lessen on you. Effect of hatred lessen on you. The effect of sensual desires, sexual desire, and all the cravings is less and lesser. Until number three, they still have sensual desire. Uh, until number three, they have not let go hundred percent. Let go of lust. The lust is fully free. After number three, I think, yeah. So these are very minute stuff. This, these are considered level one, and then you have a lot more to do after you achieve arahant. And all this has to do with your concept of: Do you want to practice just for yourself, or do you want to practice to save all sentient beings? And a more practical way, you want to expand your horizon. You want to learn for the sake of other beings, not just enjoying your own enlightenment. You want full enlightenment for all sentient beings. That needs a huge commitment. But we do not want to go too far. What Buddha say in the early Buddhism right here is the four stage of enlightenment. Four stage of enlightenment teaches us understanding this help us to appreciate. It's not easy. Because the first one is the criteria. You need to let go of wo zhi. What is wo zhi? In Chinese it's hard to some of us sometimes lump together. We don't understand. We need to understand that we are not our eyes, our five senses, we are not our thoughts, we are not our perceptions, our you know, consciousness. And and, and and those things are those things are how to say we have to come back to it until we become Buddha. These are simply do not associate yourself with them anymore. You are fully aware you have that recognition of I'm no longer my body. I'm only using it for now. I literally think of that. And I will not fear this kind of, you know, death and stuff. Because death for me is like drivers stepping down from one car to another. And this is not just conceptual, but I'm actually witnessing it. I'm actually understanding it. Uh, that means you are not allowing that thoughts, you know, wondering thoughts to become something attachment. You allow, you will still come, you will still overwhelm you, stuff like that, but you have the ability to not face by it. You're able to recover, you're able to not allowing it to touch you. You do not allow it to cling onto anything. It passed by, it will just pass by. You recognize it, you're able to recognize every part of it. As in, this is not right, this is not right, this is not right. So you recognize it, you put it in words, it will no longer cling on you. And that all the feeling, and that's why you have level two, level three. It gets weaker, 
But right now, first step is to identity, to set your path right. You do not attach to yourself. Attach to the false sense of self. Hence why we say let go of the ego. False in ego in this term is false sense of self. Identifying something they are not you as you. And hence putting too much effort into something futile in the end of the day, subject to reborn, rebirth. And all the deeds you did for this false sense of you, false you, becomes karmic activities. It, it's, it keeps replicating itself and hence causing more sufferings. Um, those things are, how to say, those things are very tricky. You need to practice. That's why they need meditation. They need to have precepts. They need to eat. When they eat, they cannot picky because you get attached to the taste. And then when, when, when you sleep, right, you have to sleep in different places so that you don't get attached to that spot. This is my spot. Uh, this is comfy. It's very easy to attach, mate. Look at ourselves then. It, it's, it just takes very easy. You take a little bit of comfort and pleasure and then we get attached. That's why we all get stuck on these little things and we forgot, we forgot how to get out of here. <laughs> Or we get stuck in anger. We, 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 someone scold you and then your mind keeps spinning, spinning, spinning. So this is the skanda, right? Look at the skanda, mate. Venture formations. Oh, scold me. Oh, that emotion. Mm. Like doing it again. Same goes with lust. Sensual desire. Oh, you like that moment. You like that moment. And then you keep repeating it. I'm no free of it. I don't say it as if I'm, a, I'm still in the middle of this mess. That's what I'm trying to say here is... It's not easy. But standard do not drop. Just because we have Amitabha, Buddhas, they do not drop the standard for us. They're just allowing us a way to suppress, not suppress, a way to um, a, another platform before this. Right? When we get up there, we're still fun fool. We're still like ordinary beings. We have not attained this by ourselves, but we gain all this and more than these four benefits. You know, this enlightenment experience due to the vow of Amitabha Buddha. That's the most miraculous part about him. Why Buddha praised him so much? Not just our Sayamuni Buddha in this world, but thousands of Buddhas, endless Buddha, all praise him. If you read the sutra, I'm pretty sure there's an English like uh, summary of that. They say, you know, the Buddha from the West, the Buddha from the East, as West and East in the sense of, you know, the universal direction. Those directions because we always have direction sense. Buddha does not need that. They say it for our benefit. Or the North, the South. And we say the Western Pure Land. Why is it Western Pure Land? And just for us to have a sense of direction so we can focus. Is Buddha really only in the West? And doesn't have to go through 10 Buddha's Pure Land? No. Buddha Pure Land is here, but the problem is, if you say it now, oh, it's here. Sure, I mean, it is here. You can be, one moment you can change into that, but can you? I can't. All right, so we need to focus on a sense of direction. Focus on Amitofo. Focus on one thing. Because our mind is already scattered by all these senses. We can't focus. We're over bombarded by A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So back to this, um, Buddha has given these talks and all of them attain Arahant. What is Arahant? Free from all five lower fetters and five higher fetters. Attachment to the four meditative absorption. Attachment to the four formless absorption. Conceit, restlessness, ignorance. All right? Comes at once. And insight does not come gradually. All four levels according to levels attainment. All right? Progress in understanding comes at once. Insight does not come gradually, successfully. Classification is for the rebel for action and attain suddenly for a reason. Theravada, our heart is created by four, although in the path of gradual agnosis are the most stretch. Mm. So different people at different level. You know, we, we can't just like... And... In the material world, in the outside world, what does it mean? First, once you reach the first level, you're no longer subject to three lower realms. You're only human heaven, human heaven, seven times. And then 
as as you improve the seven times is to teach you is to lessen the grip of the world have on you now you have only one more time before you can go into the pure abodes in heavenly realm there's a heavenly realm as which i shown you in the pyramid scheme there is a block where only people who cultivate the path of buddha dharma can enter those are the state of mind right the rest of the world the heaven they do not practice that even they have the same meditative ability their direction is not there so they can't comprehend or they can't enter that state so the last one is no rebirth that means no longer stuck in six realms they are out of six realms right just when we thought oh that's it that's not it yeah the buddha is just being very patient he's starting with this small stuff it's not small for us mate it's huge it takes many lifetime but from the perspective of full enlightenment this is a this is only primary school graduating primary school or in university terms graduating bachelor degree there are so many more to do it's just a beginning it just means hey man you no longer stuck in six dreams but you still have vow to invoke and all that those are what what we call ladder approach one two three four five and later you will came to appreciate how pure land works and then this knowledge helps you to consolidate your understanding of buddhism it's not just um you know you can't be impatient with buddhism you have to be putting your life and many lives to work on it now you have this one life that you can use the advantage the multiplier by amitabha buddha appreciate it right that's the whole point of us having this uh, buddha story that's a very good stuff you know uh, i don't want to go too deep on the other hand level because i myself have not studied too depth in depth um those are awakenings those are you know freeing from this uh erroneous view and uh beginning of a enlightenment uh, a path of true happiness in a way what is happiness in a sense right uh no longer get stuck you free but um what we need to learn from this is Buddha has given the second sutra at the time anatta lakana sutra that means he teach about this hence they are able to attain enlightenment because he teach them the characteristics this he's he's already there he just tell them how is it how it's like when you attain arahant the the first stage of an first stage of enlightenment it's hard to say first stage of nirvana all right there are four original stage to attain you know first stage of nirvana okay let's put it that way and we'll leave it there without complicating it further i mean you know what we need to take out of this is buddha um has a system in place he do not teach um people more than they can understand they will gradually improve that from here we appreciate why he took 12 years or 20 12 years i think 23 years or 12 years um to propagate the foundation stuff because without that yeah nikaya which teach all about this one is 12 years it take 12 years to teach all this all right because this is not just talking not like this it's not talking they actually practice right some people get it at once some people slowly 1 2 3 4 5 some people very sharp they just got it when he hear it because they experiencing exactly what he says uh this are all has to do with like we say people who are wealthy esteem they have their past life practice same goes for buddhist cultivation their past life practice all right and in buddhism there's no room for <laughs> jealousy for that because literally this whole thing is to tell us all right people cultivate it a lot so we should do the same for us we need to focus on amitabha fo- focus on um you know appreciating how it, how buddha make it so accessible for us right how did amitabha relate to this one right first it has 
the vow of Amitabha to help us no longer fall in the three lower realms. But especially for us who can't rely on our own faculties because of external element and because of our mindset, we have not fully um, having the environment to learn about this or we don't have the ability to finish this off in one life and we have no guarantee of next life, we can still be as, as lucky as this. Um, so we used Amitabha to suppress all this negative um, or erroneous view. Um, that means you need to let go of all other you know, thoughts, thinking, schools. You need to focus on the name of the Amitabha. And you appreciate this in a way that you can now put your heart at ease and, and we will go deeper and we will understand better. You know, the eight consciousness school that we talk about, right? is to you know explain it further like how, how skanda works and stuff but its proper value is why are we here why are we who we are why are we acting like that why am i uncontrollable in this situation because the seven consciousness the seven perception is kicked in place attached and the eight consciousness is the storehouse that admits a lot of information from the past history that past can be past life. We call past life as in we group ourselves in different period of time of existing. We stop existing when our five senses no longer, I mean our body no longer works. The problem is the ability to see, ability to hear, no long, it will never be lost. Right? It will just be restricted to different stuff, depends on what you attach. All this is because you attach. If you don't attach, there's no need to rely on eyeballs to see. You already can see. Oh my God, it's like a person who can walk, they're still holding onto the rail because he fears that he can't walk. Or another case, a lion shackled to the chain and he has been shackled since he was a cup, maybe in a zoo, in a you know old old fashioned zoo that or carnivals. Um, and now he's grown into a strong adult lion, you know, or the mane and stuff, looking very majestic. Still, he doesn't dare to move out of the range of the chain because he conditioned to believe the chain is stronger than him. Right? It's called learned helplessness. Right? And and he 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 can even easily get rid of the chain or break the chain easily with his strength, but he no longer knows. That's us, right? That's us. We already have ability to see here. Uh, of course, I can do it now. You pluck my eyes out, I will be like, ah. But, but, but we we do need to know we've been attaching this for too long. That's why we can't. Not because uh, we really can't, because we are conditioned to believe we can't. We condition you, yourself, your erroneous view, your attachments to it. It's, it's causing us a lot of problem, causing yourself a lot of problem. And this attachment getting stronger and stronger and stronger, it forms the world around us. Right? So hence, the conclusion of all phenomena arise from the heart. One far away sings out. And then if we read the Chinese conclusion of the consciousness only school, san jie wei xing, wan fa wei shi. The three realms, right? San jie wei xing, wan fa wei shi. So what kind of concept? Why not go for the so Da Chen Bai Fa Ming Mun Lun? Alright. Sanjay is here, you low, wu low, you pass the sing one so you, nice wu low, you in pass the sing one so you. Yeah. So, the whole point of saying is the three realms, right? That means the six realms. You know, they say Sanjay. The six realms, they're all coming out from our six, uh, our. Remember, Master Jikun used a lot of the consciousness on his school. Remember, all people who study Buddhism back then and they're serious about it, they actually start with consciousness on his school. It's just a tool very helpful to help you to make sense of what's going on. What's going on? Alright? 
，三界唯心万法离世，三乘佛法。啊、uh, ，Let's not go there. This is this is gonna make, make things more complicated. Whole point is the why we say true nature or phenomena arise from our true nature is because of、um, our true nature, like kaleidoscopes. It has been reflected in the different ways. Moon is still moon, doesn't change, but the water ripples. Everything changes, and 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 everything in the world is reflected from there. From the true nature, it's just a reflection of our self, true self. It's not our self. It's just reflection. You are not that mirror, that you in the mirror, right? Even you can see my image here. It's not me. It's just the light reconstruct my face, or、uh, reflected my texture into this, my features into this screen. The screen replicate my movements like this. So. Same goes for our body and spot. It's it's a, in a larger scale, right? We are also reflection of our true nature. We are not、uh, stuck like this. We are not only limited to this, right? And that gives us a very strong outlook. You know, you can be better. How to be better? How to improve yourself? You know,、uh, all this learning of Liao Fan, learning of Tai Sang Gai Pen, learning of Amitabha Buddha for、uh, you know have. Believe in yourself. Believe in your true nature. Start to come together. See, there's a system, and that's what my goal is trying to do. Of course, I need to practice better, but、um, this is how I came to understand Buddhism as well. I start with the basic Buddhism, the four realms, and then、I、start to contact with Mahayana. I start to understand that oh my goodness, there's so much things, so deep, but so systematic. You need to grab the core of it. 抓着纲领，啊，维尔伯强的说 ，you need to grab the index of things, core of things, right? If you don't understand any of this, and you earnestly chanting Amitabha, you will still understand. You get better understanding, uh, in pure land. Doesn't matter the practical purposes. All you need to do is just chanting Amitabha, have a vow to bond in pure land. Current life, having this knowledge helps you to relay to yourself and other people why Buddhism is the way it is. Why you learn practice pure land Buddhism, and why Buddhism has this huge encyclopedia of stuff? And what is Buddhism? Right. Whole point is Buddha means awakening. Why is Buddha showing this? So looking at his life, we will understand better what are we learning. So right now we we already reached that conclusion, right?、Um, you know, our existence is because of so much. Event chains of event we put ourselves in, and it becomes a result. This process keeps spinning, 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 spinning wheel that never ends. So our job is to stop adding to it. Start, you know, pointing ourselves, our compass towards a direction. How do you do that? How do you find yourself a certain、uh, amount of peace? You, you make use of this kind of session. In my case, this is how I remind myself. I, I'm I'm lost in, in normal times when I'm free and stuff like that. So this is how we work towards there.、Um, you have your own circumstances. You find your own way. Like you make videos, you understand that for these situations. Some people as well. You know, Master Ching Kong used to force him to talk, 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 talk himself. Talk about sutra, not because anything, but. He he just want to be reminded all the time. So we have a set routine to teach ourselves. That's why Buddha also set a routine for you know when you sleep, when you when you actually follow him, you follow his routine. You understand deeper, better. It's a more intense way. Everyone condition is different, and the power of Amitabha Buddha's name is because it can be used anytime, anywhere. Charged up by his vow and. If we understand our foundation as human beings and using Amitabha on top of this foundation, it will help us not just for the pure land. That one is the big one, but of course it will help us with our current life, right?、Um, some people takes this much time to get there. Some people very quickly can get into it. I need a lot of time. I understand that. So I'm despite.、Um, Whatever emotions I'm having, I'm still having to do that because of, because of, because we all have the same amount of goal. We appreciate it. We understand that 
this is what I need to do in order to get out of six rhythms so that I can have better faculties. I don't get attached by these small things, uh, sensations and feelings. Um, so all the best, guys, all the best. It's a, it's a, it's, learning Buddhism is not easy than we thought, but it is easy. To do it is just chanting Amitofo. Um, putting your heart one-minded, concentrated on that. But to, 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 to explain it, it would take many lifetimes to explain it. Buddha is only talking about a summary of it. All right? Why do we need to explain it? To be honest, when you're experiencing it, you know, to be able to teach, to do and teach, is another skill set than just doing it. Right? So other can do some, but most, some of them cannot teach. You need to teach properly. You need to understand the other side. That's another set of skill you need to have. So I would like to stop here because it's 11. It's been like two hours, three hours, two hours and a half. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think that's the recap and plus, not just recap, but plus plus. Uh, thank you so much for the um, session and we'll continue. Well, let's talk about Venerable Wooding session this Sunday. He, they will be talking about Wooding session this Sunday. Monday, I'm... I think I will go back to normal and talk about it, but I, w I think I'll make it 45 minutes or something. I don't want to drag it too long. I already overdo it this time. So I'll cut it down shorter. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it helps me as well in uh, clearing my mind, chill it, calming down as well. I was not calmed down in the beginning. It's just all sorts of rubbish in my mind, to be honest. It needs to be cleared out. Uh, I, mean, I understand why Master Jikun tell me to not because I'm very good at it it's because I well I, I can be good at it but the main reason is because this is something I need to do to remind ourselves like basically how he do it to himself um, we just need to cut down the desire to be honest in my experience we need to cut down the commitment cut down not to cut down to reduce the pursuit and um, be patient we need to be really patient Something I haven't fully learned is I need to be patient about it. Um, need to be need to stand up when it's time to stand up. Need to go out there and do things. But when when it's time to slow down, it's time to slow down. Like always have a middle path in your mind when you do things. Don't don't get sucked in. And when it's time to break, break. Do not allow um, intrusive thoughts to overcome. It. If we have a proper routine in place, no matter how busy you are, you're actually feeling a sort of dharma joy. Um, that's why I always end up in a situation where I hated it before I do it. When I do it, I kind of okay. And then when I go on with it, I actually liked it. So this is a very conflicting waves. You know, the Dylan now is different from Dylan 10 minutes ago, but it's also different from Dylan 10 minutes later. This inconsistency that comes to and fro, to and fro, is is something I have to experience and deal with. Um, it's something I need to get out of. But I'm um, patient and uh, building that character, building that habit is you need environment as well, right? That's why I implore you if you have a chance, always you know talk it out with Eric or something. Always go to an environment to inspire yourself, so that you understand why am I doing this. Because if you're by yourself and listening to this, it's good. But when you see someone act in action, doing things, then it can be wonderful as well. But not everyone needs that. For my case, I time to time always need that. You know, that's why I have the temple going on. That Even though sometimes I don't feel like doing it, but when I do it, I'm actually liking it. So don't... don't Buddha has a word saying, 生物性如意,如意不可信. Do not trust your own thoughts. You are not your thoughts. Those thoughts come and go. right? Do not rely and pitch in on that. Instead, you rein it in, channel it into the direction that you want it. Right? That, that, that makes sense. Or make sure that it is consistent. Right? Understand that all these frames per second mindset, like everything is changing. But you always, um, you, that's why you accord with condition. See, it all makes sense. Which must you? According to condition, because nothing is 
solitary, permanent. Everything you immerse, you're in this environment where everything is constructed artificially, perverted in a sense of no longer fully connected to, I mean, connected to the true nature, but twisted, right? And hence, we need to go back. How do we go back when I mean, all this teaching, teaching us how to be more loving person, compassionate person, start with your parents, your siblings, your friends, your colleagues and strangers. This is why they will teach that. And it goes backwards, uh, tracing your step back. And then you lost again in the sea of sensories, you know, all this lust, you know, all this exciting stuff. That's my experience at the moment. And over the top, and, and spend my energy pursuing the excitement. And then it gets weakened. And then, and then lose your pace, lose your footing. As in, you got it, you got the ball, you got the ball, you got the ball, and then you lose it. And then you need to chase the ball again, get it back. And the longer you can hold the ball, that means the longer you can apply right amount of discipline, right amount of willpower, right amount of determination, the longer you can hold it. And this is the race of how long you can hold it. Same, because like Nian Fo, right? You, Nian Fo, you need to apply it so that you become unconscious when you chant it. You're not just consciously chanting it, that's not enough. There's like four stages of competence that I accidentally opened up. There are conscious, comp the top two is conscious competence and the top top is unconscious competence. Unconsciously, you know how to do it. All right. So the bottom one is unconscious incompetence. You don't know, you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know that you don't know. Or you don't know that you don't know how to do it. Oh God. And then conscious competence, incompetence. You know that you can't do this. So I'm like, I don't know this. I know that I don't know how to do this. I know that I can't do this. Doesn't mean that you can't. It's just right now you can't. Your problem is so many. You're, uh, you're, you're in the middle of the test, of the, of the wave, ripped out. You can't get out of it. But you need to get out of it. That's level two. Now you know that you don't know. First thing is you don't even know you don't know. That's like, I don't know I'm wrong. I don't think it's wrong. You don't know that you are wrong. All right. Worst thing is you thought you're right. That's even worse. So now you know that you're wrong. That's level two. Level three is now I know how to do this, but I need to apply constant, you know, vigilance. I need to like hold the ball and all that. Then the last stage is, as you can see, the skillful people master and all that. Sui Yan Zi They literally like do nothing and then they still do it right. That's like when you see someone just do something very well, they don't talk, they just talk to you and they keep drawing and it's like, yeah, suddenly the whole drawing is beautiful. Or, you know, like uh, uh, old chef. They don't talk, they just talk to you but when they slice the garlic up and everything is just perfect. It's called unconscious competence. Name for you, yeah, when you're trying to meet chant until a level where you just, you don't think about chanting. You just chant. It's just like breathing. And then you go on with your life, cleaning, whatever, do your job, go on life. You still have that going on. Holy moly. That's, that's how you make it. How, that's how you know you make it. What, what we have right now, in case of my case, I can't speak for everyone. I don't have the experience and vision. That's too arrogant of me to say. But for my case, at least in my case, this helplessness is very painful. But the problem is we always make ourselves helpless. That's the problem. We reject the opportunities sometimes to get help. Sometimes we close up our mind like a perception. Like you know, and this is it's always like that. My dynamic with this group or these people is like that. Or my perception of myself is always like that. No, I cannot. I cannot. Don't do that to yourself. Always allow a bit of opening, no matter how hard it is. And that opening might be the chance for you to break it through next level. Maybe you go back again, but now you taste second level, you will like, nah, man, I'm going back. And then you get pushed out. And then you're going back. And then you get pushed out. So Huang Lian Zhu Lao Ju Si, which is the Mr. Huang, right? I think you heard of it. Huang Lian Zhu Lao Ju Si. Master Huang, um, he is the one that wrote the book and um, 
wrote a commentary on the Infinite Life Sutra. Master Ching Kong respect him immensely. And he's the Bodhisattva Guan Yin come again. So basically what he say is, practicing in six rooms is 10 steps forward, nine steps back. That's good. That means you're moving forward. Right? Of course, there are cases like 10 steps forward, 12 steps back. That's bad. It get worse and worse and worse. But our hope is you owe at least one step forward. And when you're going through 10 steps forward, do not get arrogant. Because you will get pushed back to normal. Nine steps back. Back to reality. But this reality is changing a little bit. You're no longer stuck in the old mode. You start to see there is a possibility. You already tasted the 10 step. Even you can't hold it. You can hold a ball. You can hold a ball that long. Next time you can you have that wow, you have the view to get better. This is how we practice. Nian for ye hao, sumoto hao. Like your video recording, making as well. Now you like tasted that, you know, joy or that moment. Yeah, people give you their feedback and stuff. And then suddenly you understand that I need to do this better, better, better. You harness, you sharpen the sword to a level. So Nian for is the same thing. You just sharpen it until that point of perfection. However, you need to have the right set of belief and vow. If you just do it for the sake of fortune, then of course it will just be normal fortune. But if you actually do it because you want to help people around you, every or your loved ones or your parents back in China or your adopted parents, it doesn't matter, your people around you, or the Melinda or someone else, you have that vow very strong. You can't step back. You need to move forward. And then when you use that mindset to chant Amitofu, that is the most powerful Amitofu you have. Even you just chant 10 times. Look at, look at, quality is very good. Quality of that moment is strong. As in you're very concentrated at the moment. The intention is very pure and very powerful. So always practice this. Get better at the same thing that you're doing. Like Bruce Lee say, right? I do not fear a person who can throw a thousand types of punches. I fear those person who can throw one punches, practice one punches a thousand times. Because he get that he get that penetration level that no one can imagine. All it takes is one one punch and then not referring to the enemy. But yeah, that one punch. That focus. Alright, thank you. Ah me to ah me to for a 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 me to for thank you everyone thank you auntie Yenzi. thank you Good night. Good morning to you. Good night to myself. Bye-bye. <laughs>